good morning guys uh it's monday morning uh i took the day off yesterday uh puttered around a little bit and i went up to cruise night stuff like that anyway when i last left off on uh on the project the 51 chevy uh, i was stripping the cab i'm still on that i'm also uh removing all you know all the crap off the firewall uh get the windshield out um i have found one spot of concern i'm going to go over it with you fairly quickly and uh you know we're just going to carry on cleaning this thing up um overall it's pretty good pretty good shape um yeah i guess uh i guess we might as well just uh just get to it so as i'm working my way around uh came to the where the windshield was all shattered and you know me mr safety uh it came apparent uh pretty quickly that this thing was going to come out in a million pieces of glass so instead of, you know, later picking glass out of my eye, I figured I'd just put some tuck tape on there and kind of hold it together. I did both sides, inside and out. Um, hopefully it'll hang together in one piece when I take it out, and uh, then I can get rid of it. So, uh, yeah. And then the spot of concern I was talking about was down here. And this pillar, it was full of this crap, and that was probably wet at one time, which caused it to rust here touch and out in the front here as well so i'm going to be you know rebuilding the bottom of this uh this pillar so it is what it is that's really the only bad spot in the whole truck so uh you know i can handle that and uh yeah i guess i'll go ahead and take that windshield out uh without killing myself and uh we'll carry on okay so i'm happy to report it came out in one piece uh, the old tape trick worked. Um, you would have been proud of me. I used uh, gloves and, and glasses and everything. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to carry on uh, stripping this thing. And, uh, you know, I'll come back when they've got uh, a whole lot more done. This, uh, this pillar here, it had been hit right about here. I can show you the, the trim. Ugh. There it is there. That was the center pillar. So you see where it was hit with something. So the uh, the post was bent. So it was bent inward. I straightened it out. It's good now. It's nice and straight. You can see. Because you got to remember there's a flat, you know, flat glass that goes in here. And if uh, this post is bent, when you go to put in your new glass, you can either break it or it'll leak. So make sure that post is, is straight. So, yeah, I'm just going to carry on, and uh, when I get a good chunk of it uh, wrapped up, I'll be back. Okay, so I've uh, stripped down as low as, uh, you know, what was comfortable sitting in a chair. So the rest, the bottom part, I'm going to get while I get the uh, cab elevated. We're going to put it up shortly. I just uh, I want to get the fuel tank filler neck out, which means I also want to get the seat out and the fuel tank. So, uh, yeah, I've unbolted the seat. It's just four bolts and uh yeah out she comes uh the seat frame is in really good shape but i need springs and stuff for it i'll see what i can dig up but uh anyway i'm gonna pull this out get it out of the way the tank we're scrapping and uh yeah once i do that then i can finish stripping off this a little bit and uh we got some work to do inside the jams and stuff too but whatever anyway that's where i'm at Okay, so uh, I took the seat out. Um, it's over there. Uh, it's actually in really good shape. And all the hardware is still in here. It all looks pretty good. Just needs to be uh, lubed up and, you know, so you can slide the seat back and forth. Um, so, yeah, we'll vacuum this all out once I get this tank out. Tank is loose in there right now, you know. Um, but there's a line that comes out of the back of the floor, and it's teed off. So I've got to cut that off to get the tank out. It's holding it back. So I want to get it up in the air. So that's my uh, one of my next moves. And I stripped down, you know, like I said, comfortable from a chair. This hole, I'm going to be filling that hole anyway. Uh, remembering that I, I'm putting a tank between the frame rails at the back of the truck behind the rear axle. So uh, we're not going to need this hole. So we'll fill that in. Um, yeah, so right now what I guess I'm going to do is I'll uh, I'll go to time lapse and I'm going to uh, do the great uh, the great garage shuffler. I got to move all this stuff around, get the cab to where I can pick it up with my hoist. 
and get it onto a table or something. I don't know. But I'd like to have it on something that rolls around so I can work on it. And then I can finish stripping all the bottom stuff and uh, have access to those cab corners because I've got to change both of those and work on that front uh, front post over there. So that's the plan. So, uh, yeah, i got some shit to move around. Uh, it seems like I'm constantly moving shit around, but that's part of the game. Okay, there we go. I gotta say something about this cart, man. You know, this little cart here. My dad built that, I don't know, 35 years ago. And uh, I've used it for all sorts of things. But, uh, you know, to hold a cab like that, and it spins and turns nicely. The wheels don't bind up or, you know, it's not too much weight for it. Um, but what a great little cart. You know, he built it originally as a little tool cart, tool parts cart, you know, kind of thing. But uh, I use it for all sorts of stuff. But... Uh, this, this worked out great. You might have noticed when I was uh, in time-lapse, I, I screwed a couple of 2x4s to the top of the table trying to, you know, widen it out, give it a little more stability. Um, but it didn't fit under the cab. The, the hoist was full height, and it just didn't fit. So I could have put it down on the table. Actually, I did. And uh, I checked it out, and it wasn't rocking, because if it, if it was, I would have just... Uh, put a couple blocks between the uh, hoist arms and the cab and that would have brought the cab up a little higher then I could have put the two by fours on but doesn't need it so you know what could possibly go wrong <laughs> anyway a uh, couple things so here's that little T piece I was telling you about coming off the gas tank so I'm just going to cut it off right here that'll get the tank out and then underneath the cab corner you can see there a couple little spots so I'm going to put a brand new one on both sides. So I'm going to start from this corner. We'll clean up, get the cab corner done, and then keep on rolling all the way around until it's all finished up. Um, that'll be tomorrow, though. It's like 7.30-ish, and uh, i got a mess to clean up and bring a few parts in so they don't get rained on tonight. Not that it's going to or anything, but why take a chance? And... Uh, you know, relax and have a nice ice cold pop. Maybe watch a ball game. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, that's where I'm at uh, today. Uh, so tomorrow morning, we'll get right on stripping that back corner and getting that cab corner welded in. So back tomorrow. Okay, so here's a big-ass pile of dirt. Uh, that's what was jammed into the cab corner pockets on both sides. And, uh, you know, that's why it rotted out. It was... Probably wet mud at one time. Anyway, I used the shop vac, vacuumed it up. You know, I'd be uh, I'd be willing to bet that uh, this floor is in better shape than your 2015 Silverado or F-150 sitting in your driveway right now. Uh, it's it's friggin' mint. Uh, you know, a couple holes to patch where the fuel line went out, the factory hole. There's, I think this is a drain hole or something. Uh, that's access to the master cylinder, and that was for the shifter. This is your battery box. So, I mean, there's no holes in this thing other than the factory ones. Uh, no rust out anywhere. So, yeah, it's it's mint. So, that's that's a good thing. Um, I'm also going to try and free up these uh, tracks, you know, so the seat can slide back and forth. So, I'll squirt them with uh, WD and see what happens. And uh, my next shot now is to, I started cleaning up here. No sense cleaning down here, they were cutting that off. So we're going to cut it off around here and uh, get our new 
tab corner in place and weld her up. So, uh, there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's still a little bit of mud packed down and low, but you know, when I cut it off, I can get all that shit out of there. So, yeah. So my next step is to, uh, cut the cab corner out. pile of stuff down here uh, packed in there um, so what I'm gonna do next um, I'm going to trim this down even here with this outside line that I followed all around here and back down so we'll just take out this this bottom piece here essentially um, that the new rocker wraps right up underneath and uh, we're probably going to come up a little bit higher, but not quite as high as what this one is. I don't have to come that high. So, you know, it fits like so, right? So we just got to clean things up a little bit and, uh, you know, cut, cut a lip off of this edge here and some of this down as well. So just a little bit of dicking around, but I'll get it going. And, uh, you know, once I have it all in place, I'll, uh, and trimmed out, I'll come back. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much where this uh, cab corner wants to live. Um, what I'm going to do, when I say double cut, so first I'm going to clean up around this edge down here and over here. The idea with this is, I don't know if you can see that crease in there, or maybe, yeah, there we go. This crease right here. The idea being is you're supposed to hammer this in. Well, on a tight curve like this, I've always had issues with uh, with pounding that in. It uh, never seems to go as smooth as it should. <laughs> so that's why I like to cut alongside the edge because I know that my door gap is good. This is good and straight. So I'm going to cut all the way down here and do the same thing on the other side. And then <clears throat> I'll double cut like so right around okay through both double cut meaning cutting through this and the sheet metal in behind throw the top piece of the patch away and the bottom piece of the sheet metal that's on the truck throw that away and what you're going to end up with is the two pieces coming together with a gap the thickness of this disc so perfect for welding so i've got to clean up these edges first and fit this thing in nicely and then I'll do the double cut and get that all lined up. And we'll be ready to weld this thing in place. Okay, so I've prepped this stuff all up. Uh, I used the rust converter first. And then I gave it a little of uh, candy apple trim clad. So she's sealed up. Good shape, you know, solid. Uh, I also cleaned up the bottom and I drilled some holes down there for plug welding underneath. And uh, I'm just going to fit this thing in. And... Uh, We'll finish cutting her in place. Okay, so she's all fitted in nicely here. Got a nice gap for welding. Same as over here. So uh, now I'm gonna cut this line and I'm gonna cut through the top metal and the bottom metal at the same time. And that should give me a perfect joint for uh, for welding. 
So I'm going to cut through most of it and I'll come back when I'm ready to finish it off. Okay, so I'm cut all the way around right up to here. I got about a half an inch left and you can see from the inside it's also cut right through. So uh, I'm going to set up the camera. I'll finish cutting that piece off and uh, show you where we're going from here. Okay, don't mind the noise. It'll only be for a few seconds. There we go. Now there's a couple of spots that it's not right through. I'll just finish that off and then I'll peel off the other piece from inside. There it is. So now, what I like to do, see how this popped out, use my little clamp here, and I like to start somewhere in the middle, in the middle here somewhere. The reason for that is uh, as you're welding and bringing out, this may want to spread a little bit, and it might end up being a little bit too tight on each end. Um, so you're going to want to run the grinder up here again to open that up. Now, looks like I'm a bit tight. I'm going to have to recut along here already. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's a little snug. Well, I'll have to run the grinder through there and open that up just a little bit. This here is okay right here. Okay, got it nice and flush. I'll just have to play with it a little bit and uh, get it so it's all lined up. And then I'll come back and we'll tack it in place. Okay, so all along here was good. That's fitting in there nicely. I just had to take the grinder and just put a thickness of the, of the disc from about here across and then down a little bit. And everything lines up pretty nice. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw a few tacks in this thing. So it stays together where I want it, and uh, yeah, it won't buzz it in. mask is fogging up, can't see a damn thing. Okay, so you get the idea, and I'm just going to keep on welding it in, and uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done.
I still got a little bit to do underneath. Uh, the plug welds in a boat may be that much welding on, on each corner. But uh, I figured this uh, this would give you the idea of how she's going to look. Came out pretty good. Um, it's not all distorted or anything else. You know, it looks, uh, looks pretty good from the inside as well. So, yeah. I'm pleased. Very pleased. So next I think I'll move up. I'll fill this in. And then we're going to head that away. So, uh, yeah, not a bad, uh, not bad for a day. I uh, got quite a bit done. So there you go. One cab corner done. Uh, one more to go. Uh, you know, it came out really nice, man. It's, it's not going to need much filler. It's like, it's pretty slick. Looks good. Feels good. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, in the next video, I'll fill in that, uh, gas filler hole and uh do the other cab corner uh i'm not gonna spend a lot of time filming the cab corner i mean you you just saw it right so uh and then we're gonna get to that front uh a pillar where the uh lower hinge is that's a big job but once that's done this cab is uh ready to roll man it's uh it's in good shape We'll pull a few dents out and stuff. There's dings and dents all over it, but uh, they're pretty minor. I'll use the stinger for a lot of it. And, uh, you know, we'll just carry on. And once the cab is uh, done, we'll get it on the frame. Because uh, I know I have to make some clearance for the transmission and the heads on the small block Chevy. Minor, minor clearance issues. So uh, we'll get that taken care of too. Um... Yeah, a uh, bunch of new subscribers from the last video. Thank you very much. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, you know, like the channel and all that good stuff. Don't be afraid to leave comments down below. Uh, I really get a kick out of comments. And I do answer them all. And, uh, you know, if you're not doing anything else, get out in the garage and build something, man. Later, guys.